Hey guys, it's a beautiful spring day. We're checking out a new one from Surface 604. This is the quad, and it's named after the old 1980s quad angle bicycles, which had this unique frame design where they carry this top tube all the way down into those uh, seat stays. And then we've got this other sort of top tube that's a little bit more parallel to the ground, and then they do this crisscross thing. It adds some strength, it adds some nice visual aesthetic to the bike. Keeps the standover height a little bit lower, but this is still much higher than something like a step-through model, where, or maybe a mid-step. So you're getting some stiffness, you're getting some style, a Surface 604 has another bike that's very, very similar. It's called the Shred. In fact, most of the parts and components and everything match between these two bikes. So it's interesting to see that that must have been a popular model for them. And then they just had fun with it. I mean, look at this brushed aluminum alloy. And then they've got these silvery, glossy highlights for the branding. And it's really, it's just very tastefully done. I noticed there is not a slap guard on the chain stay here. You can see a little bit of grease from the chain. Over time, you might get some nicks, but they're not gonna show up quite as much as if this was actually painted and you're chipping the paint off or something. That's something you could fix easily with a piece of clear tape or maybe uh, a neoprene slap guard. Although we do have the wires down here for the motor as well as uh, the shifting line. So it's not a huge deal, but I, I wanted to point that out because it, it's just such a beautiful aesthetic. This bike comes in two frame sizes. We're looking at the medium large, but they do have a small medium. It fits, fits me great. I'm 5'9", about 135 pounds. It actually doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of reach. So sometimes these bikes, which I consider, you know, it's it's a little bit more value, 25.99 with the regular capacity battery pack, 672 watt hours, or you go up to 29.99 if you want to get the 960 watt hour battery pack. So it's great that they have a couple options in terms of frame sizes and battery capacity, depending on how far you want to go or how much you weigh. There's a lot of options on this bike. So we do have bottle cage bosses. They're way down here. It's not going to be super convenient to reach down there to get them. You could add like a cup holder or something, or maybe you get a rear rack. We do have bosses for adding a rear rack. Very very nice. Some attachment points down here as well. So you could have maybe a child seat or something, get a really sturdy rack, something with uh, pannier blockers and stuff, or you can get the rack directly from them. And this is all set up to run a rear light directly from that rechargeable battery pack, which is very cool because it does come with a headlight. This is Bouchelle. It's a really nice light. It's got some side windows a little bit here. It's called the Shiny 120, 120 lux on this thing, very bright. And look where it's mounted, up high, kind of on the stem with this special bracket they've designed so there's enough room for the display and stuff. So it's, it's giving you a little bit more visibility down without getting cut off by this optional fender down here. That's the last option I wanna talk about. We got these fenders, aluminum alloy. They're working pretty well. Nice kickstand position, you can pedal back walk the bike backwards without getting pedal lock. Um, but there is a little bit of vibration and rattling on that thing. You can hear it when you're riding fast off-road. And again, these tires just beg to be taken off-road. These are the Maxxis Recon tires. Very nice, 27.5 by 2.8. So they are plus size tires. And that gives you a little bit more surface area for improved traction, stability, and comfort because you know air squishy we've got a pretty decent range here i think it's 17 to 35 psi so you can you can lower them a little bit and get that nice float feeling um i want to point out they've max terra 3c exo puncture protection and they've got this nice light brown kind of a sidewall here that isn't reflective like some of the other surface 604 bikes like the rook and the colt they've got actual reflective sidewall stripe but then you look at this whole frame i mean it's brushed aluminum alloy the whole frame has a nice visual footprint and then with that headlight you know one of my trade-offs here or complaints it's like how oh, they don't have a rear light but you can wire it in so if you get that optional rear rack you can wire it in, it will run right off the battery pack, which I think is great. So a lot of people might not need that rear light. Maybe you're like me, you got a helmet with a little blinker on top, or you put something on your backpack, and you're really just riding this thing on trails and stuff. But you know, other people might wanna use it in the city as kind of a weekday commuter or something, something that you can cut across the grass and do some little jumps, or maybe take the secret path and just make your shortcut on your way home. I, I love bikes like this because it's sort of one bike for everything. You know, you can take it off-road. It's got this nice 100 millimeter suspension fork. And this is an upgrade here. So XCM32, and it's got a 15 millimeter through axle. So it's actually a really sturdy 
setup. I mean, this is nice and 13 gauge spokes, looks like 12 in the rear. So these are thicker. A lot of times I'm just seeing 14 gauge spokes and this is 36 hole rims. So more spokes, thicker spokes. That's what you're getting. And then the plus size tires. It's a really cool setup. 32, that's calling out these 32 millimeter steel stanchions. So this is not an air fork. We've just got straight inch and an eighth steer tube. It's not tapered. Um, but still, you know, we've got this sort of lockout adjust here. If you want, you can reduce the bobbing and stuff, get a little bit more efficiency. Preload, so you can preload that spring for your body weight. It's decent. And I almost don't notice, you know, the, the fork is not frame matched, right? The frame is silver or brushed aluminum. The fork is black and kind of all the other components and stuff are black, including the rims, including the spokes, including the hubs, including the motor. This is a pretty nice motor. This is Bethang. It's a 500, 750 watt planetary geared hub motor, 65 Newton meters of peak torque. Same thing for the shred. So these bikes are fairly capable as far as, you know, hub motor e-bikes go. And you get the throttle, which is something you don't see a lot on mid-drive electric bikes. And I think mid-drives kind of dominate the trail scene and mountain scene, but this thing is very capable. And you can see back here, there's this black thing shoved up against the sort of the dropout and that's actually a torque sensor so this is a lot more sensitive it's more dynamic than a cadence sensor a lot of other e-bikes just have a little you know disc down here with the magnets or the smaller disc on the other side that's a little bit more hidden but it's just measuring whether you're pedaling or not this one's measuring how hard you're pushing it's a lot more dynamic and it is a class 2 electric bike so we've got the throttle up here which can be easily removed you can unplug this thing if you want to Actually, I thought it would be easily removed. Let me see if, go down from here. Yep, there it is. Okay, I just wanted to double check that. So you can take that thing off and then this becomes class one, which is allowed on the most trails, right? It's just pedal assist electric bike. You're, you're not really bending the rules that way or breaking the rules, uh, which I think is cool. You can take that off, go on the trails, or you can actually unlock with a password and take this up to like a speed pedal act performance, something like 26, 27 mile per hour top speed. Very cool. Again, sort of an open source approach here. Um, I wanna call out some of the other specs on the bike. So we've talked a little bit about the suspension, the wheels. These are again, 650B, so 27.5, but with the plus size tires, you end up with almost like a 29er performance, which lowers the attack angle and just gives you that nice rolling momentum and stability once you are up to speed. It does take a little bit more power and torque to move that larger, heavier wheel, but we have a good motor for that. So the drivetrain itself, I wanna point out this nice steel sticks chain ring. This is a 38 tooth and it is narrow wide. So it really grabs that chain. You'll notice there's no chain cover. There's no guide, but we've got that narrow wide chain ring. Very good. The hollow spindle down here. That's another upgraded part. It's lighter. It has this really smooth rotation and this is also sealed. Same thing with the headset up there and then some of the other hubs and things on this. It's, it's designed to be a little bit more water resistant. Surface 604 is a Canadian company right here in Vancouver, British Columbia. So their products, they're kind of like water tested because it rains here quite a bit. That's why it's so beautiful and lush right now outside. So I appreciate that they, they upgrade on some of these different par parts, 170 millimeter crank arms. And then they got these kind of generic, but, but nicer. I mean, there's no brand on this. I don't, I don't see Welgo or any labeling at all, but they do have these uh, fixed pins to really give you some traction. And then it's gold. It doesn't quite match the chain, but um, it's still decent. And I heard they might go to black at some point in the future. So I might correct that. And then this chain here, I asked them like, well, is this like rust resistant or is there an upgrade? And they were like, you know, I, I, any chain could rust over time, but it does seem like it's holding up really well right now. You can see it's, it's greased nicely. And then back here on the cassette, this is nine speeds, 11 to 36. So it's a pretty decent spread. Sometimes I'll just see like, you know, 14 to 28 or 11 to 32. So 11 to 36, it's nice. The next step up would be 11 to 42. And you want that that taller gear, that's your lowest gear. It's good for climbing and starting and giving you that power. I haven't had a problem on this bike. Again, I'm like, you know, 135 pounds, I'm fairly fit. And with that torque sensor, you know, when you really start to climb or you need it, the motor is right there for you. And being able to add a little bit of power with that trigger throttle is always nice too. So I like it. And the fact that this has been ridden quite a bit, this is a demo bike. Uh, Jason, one of the designers at the company is, uh, he loves this bike. It's his favorite. So, you know, the, the tires are faded, the bike's a little bit dirty, but there's no rust and, and the gold is, is still 
looking beautiful. Again, blinged out is how I feel about this thing. We got the SRAM X5 derailleur down here. It's a really snappy, like tight derailleur. If we come up front here, we've got the trigger shifters and they are one-way triggers, but they're they're using the thumb, which I really appreciate because then it frees up your, your fingers here, your index finger primarily and your middle finger for, for braking. So you can shift, you can brake. It's all very accessible. I have been told that Surface 604 might have to swap from Shimano to SRAM, sort of depending on supply chain availability. Their bikes have had that going on for like 2020, 2021, but these are all good parts. So whether it's like Shimano Alivio or SRAM X5, I feel like you're in good hands. It shifts really well. The trigger shifters are great. And because this isn't a mid drive, you know, shifting gears and stuff doesn't really interfere with the motor. In fact, if you do break the chain or something goes wrong, you can still just throttle your way home, which is kind of cool. From here, we go up to the seat post. We've actually got a shim going on because they have the optional SR Suntour NCX suspension post, and this comes in 27.2. So they had to use a shim to adapt it. I believe the stock size is 30.4. A more active saddle than a lot of their other bikes. I've been looking at the Rook and Colt. Uh, again, those are more like city, sort of relaxed. They've got a built-in rack, so you can't ever take it off. You can't strip it down and you know lighten it up a little bit. This saddle, is fairly comfortable. I mean, it's Velo. I like the brown. It sort of ties in, complements that vintage look. I want to talk about weight a little bit. This bike's like 57 and a half pounds about for the size medium large that we're on here. I weighed it with the fenders and then I subtracted a couple pounds. So keep that in mind. I mean, we it might have to subtract a few pounds depending on this suspension post. I'm trying to get as close as possible, but for me, that's actually kind of heavy. That's not with the higher capacity battery, which might add another pound or two and it's really you know just it's it's like a trail bike like 50 plus pounds you, you want to kind of stay below that but i think sometimes the hub motors the thicker spokes and just the reinforced frame the extra tubing probably makes this weigh a little bit more the weight is positioned fairly low and centered on the frame a little bit rear heavy but not too bad when i lifted it up because this fork the thicker 32 millimeter stanchions and stuff it's just it's not as light as an air fork and you do end up with I think a pretty good even weight distribution. So it does handle pretty well, but I, I loaned this to a friend a minute ago and he was riding over doing some jumps in the park and trying to get some air. And you know, it seems like he had a lot of speed, but then ugh, like he couldn't really get the bike into the air just using his body weight as much as if he was ramping the bike off something. So just keep that in mind. That's one of the trade-offs. The bike's a little bit heavy. We got a big mess of cables up here and stuff, but they are mostly internally routed on the frame, which looks nice. And then they they do protrude here at the bottom bracket, but they're fairly well protected by that chain ring. So just taking stock of the bike, to get the fenders, you're paying extra. For the rack with the integrated light, you're paying extra. Suspension seat post, which is nice to have if you have a sensitive back or neck, you know, that's extra. I do think that for most people, the suspension fork and the plus size tires is gonna be just fine. The suspension post is nice, but it's not as much of a requirement for me as on some of the other bikes I've tested that have a longer stem. This is a pretty short stem down here and it's just zero degrees and it's raised up 15 millimeter, 10, 10 and five spacers. So it's, you're actually fairly upright in that nice, you know, low rise handlebar swept back a little bit. I love that they have the locking grips and that everything's so clean up here and that they have dedicated buttons for the control pad. So you've got lights, power, information, plus minus. It's it's very clean. Even the display, you know, you can adjust this back and forth. You can't remove it, but it is adjustable to reduce glare. We've got a USB charging port full size on the base there, as well as over here on the battery pack. So two USB charging ports, very nice. And that's, that's a welcome addition, considering that even the stock battery is 672 watt hours. If you get the 960, being able to charge your phone or run an additional light or I don't know, I think the headlight's pretty great. Again, Bichelle, shiny 120, 120 lux. It's got the top cut off, it's aimable. It's not gonna get blocked by the tire or anything. I mean, fantastic. But you add that rear light, you know, it's just, it's nice that you can, you can tap into these things. And sometimes if you take the battery off the bike, you could use that at home as like extra energy or maybe you're camping or something. I, I do wanna take this off real quick. We've got the, the locking port up high. One of my complaints is that the charging port is down low and that both of these are on the non-drivetrain side of the bike. So it's tipped towards me and I have to kind of like bend way down to plug this in. 
I don't have to take it off the bike to charge it, and I don't need any dongles or anything, but I still have to plug in down here and then look, it's sort of right in the way of that crank arm if you accidentally pedal backwards, walk the bike backwards. It's just the way that this is designed. I still think it's a great sort of open source battery. I love that it's got the branding and stuff, but that is a trade-off. That is one of the concerns I have. So I'm turning the, the locking core there, pulling on this handle. God, let's see if I can, there we go. Kind of stuck on there. This is what it looks like inside the frame. Here is the charger. This is another one of my little complaints. The charger is only a two amp charger. So 54.6 volt, two amps, weighs about a pound and a half. You got this little uh, barrel plug. It's, it's not proprietary. It's really just kind of small plugs right into this. And I've heard that sometimes there can be like power arcing and stuff. I haven't had an issue. I think the biggest biggest trade-off with a charger like this is that it's just going to take longer, especially if you get that upgraded battery pack. This battery pack right here weighs about 7.7 .7 pounds. If you upgrade to the 960, 20 amp hours instead of 14, you know, it's a 10 out, a 10 pound battery. So, you know, they do, they do weigh quite a bit. I mean, it's pretty dense. Again, both of them, 48 volts, 14 amp hour on this one, 20 amp hour on the optional upgrade. We just set this in and I think we can just, yeah, basically like that. Make sure it's on there before you go riding real fast and hard. Take the keys off. So even though this is a first generation of the quad angle, I feel like it's fairly refined because it is based on the shred. One thing I called out about that bike was, you know, they do sell through some shops, but they also sell this direct, which means there's a little bit of you know, messing around. You gotta unbox it and straighten the handlebar and do some stuff. And there, there isn't a derailleur guard. So sometimes I see this steel piece of metal, it's like a loop and it can protect the motor power cable. I like that this comes out at an angle and it doesn't seem like it's really that vulnerable. I feel like you're gonna hit the pedal first and maybe the saddle if this bike tips. It's just, it's just a little something. You wanna be careful anytime you are buying a bike direct and it's being shipped to you, there's just, it's some additional screwing around. So that's a trade-off. That's part of why you're getting a lower price point, uh, $25.99 or $29.99, depending on the battery that you choose. And that's USD. For Canadians, $35.99 starting. I think it's finally time to get up here into the display. Uh, one of the trade-offs that a lot of, especially trail bikes and stuff make, is that instead of using a half-grip twist throttle, which can compromise your grip and you know maybe you're going down a hill and you're you're really holding on tight to steer and handle the bike you accidentally twist the throttle it can you just it could be a bad thing and destabilize you a bit so instead they go with trigger throttles which is which is great but because they have trigger shifters over here on the right hand side they put the throttle over here on the left which is just a little bit it's it's not the most intuitive for people who are used to like jet skis and snowmobiles and um I don't know, dirt bikes and stuff that, that have maybe a twist throttle or trigger on the right. So it's, it's a very minor thing, but I want to point it out. Fairly easy to reach here. Again, the cockpit, even though there's some wires and stuff, I feel like it's pretty clean. It's well laid out. So to, to boot the bike up, um, I think, you know, we can press this power button down here just to see the charge level of the battery. But when we're ready to turn on the bike, we press this power button. You have to hold it for just a second too, for it to boot up. It says Surface 604. We're in the bright sunlight, so I can read this pretty well, but it's it's not the brightest thing, and that comes back to angling it a little bit if you want to. In fact, I might take us over into the shade for this. There we go, hopefully this is better for you. So we can see 100%, I love that you use a percentage on the battery charge level instead of just like five bars or 10 bars leaving you kind of guessing when you get that last bar or two. Percentage is great. And then we've got a power readout as well as uh, current speed so right now it's at zero because we're standing still it always starts in assist level one which means if you start pedaling the motor is going to help you but the throttle is also hot in fact i think the throttle is hot in zero as well so that's kind of neat you know that that means you could turn off pedal assist not worry about what your legs are doing and just control the bike almost like a dirt bike or something using the throttle i appreciate that it's a little bit more advanced and it's something to be wary of because if you turn the bike on like we just did and i'm not on the bike if i press that throttle i mean the, the bike is powerful it could kind of take off and tip over on someone so please be careful uh, down here we've got trip distance odometer and then the plus and minus you know they take us through those different levels of assist the highest one being five and then if we press that information button here it changes the readout so we just got max speed here average speed time odometer and then it just loops back around 
we've got the light, which you have to hold it for a few seconds. And then did you see the display got dimmer? And it looks like it's flashing on screen because it's interfering with my camera capture rate. But that's nice that it, it dims a little bit. And then that headlight, again, wow, 120 lux. It's, it's quite bright. It's got those little cutouts on the side, so you're fairly visible. I feel like they could be a, a little bit larger, but this is, this is a nice light and the bracket that they've chosen and maybe even made custom. I think it works really well. Cables don't seem to be getting in the way. Uh, this light has a nice top cutoff. It's, it's, it's a, it's a good thing. I mean, this is great. One complaint I have though, is that, you know, you see the Bouchel like branding on top. I think a little bit of light leaks through that. And if you're up here looking down, it's just kind of, I was worried it would ruin my night vision, but I don't think it's any brighter than the display. So not the end of the world. Let's go ahead and turn off that headlight. And again, I want to call out that if you get their optional rack with that integrated rear light from Bouchelle, this is set up to plug right in. So it would, you power both lights from the battery. I just love that. I think that's fantastic. And then if we hold the minus key, we get walk mode, which is quite good if you're maybe you got the rack or maybe you got a flat tire or something, you're limping home and you're trying to move a 57 pound bike. It's nice that the, the bike can help you out a little bit. And again, the reason you'd want to use walk mode versus just like riding the bike with a flat tire is your weight is going to really be hard on the tires and the tubes inside and maybe even the rims. So, you know, if you get a flat, walk it. And then we've got the settings. So if we hold plus and minus for a couple seconds, we get into the display settings. It's really cool. Let's see here. We can change the readout from metric to imperial. We can change the, the backlight brightness, which is, is very cool because again, you might be ruining your night vision. And I love that they give you access to that. And then dormancy, that's like how quick this thing turns off. We could change state of charge from percentage to like, let's see here, voltage. That's very cool. I like that. I tend to use percentage myself. Reset our trip distance, uh, torque sensor sensitivity, and there's passwords. So you can kind of lock this thing off. And then of course the voltage, it is a 48 volt battery. So we just want to leave it at that. And then back here on advanced settings, change the wheel size and the speed limit and stuff. Um, in order to get to some of these advanced settings and to change the top speed, you need a password from the company. And I've listed some of that information back at the written review, electricbikereview.com, where I've measured everything I possibly could. You know, I talked to these guys, I really try to go in depth and just give you guys the full picture so that whether you're buying this bike brand new or you're buying it secondhand, you kind of know what the stats are and you can maintain it and uh, get the right parts for it. So I think that's really cool that they, they leave it unlocked. Um, I, with that said, I don't know, I, I wanna compliment the, the disc brakes again. Just the, the larger brakes, these are almost like motocross with that ball end and that's designed so if you crash that these don't impale you. So that's a higher speed brake, which is pretty cool. And then down here, 180 millimeter rotors with the larger pistons, even though they're just dual piston, not quad. We got 180 in front and rear. They're just gonna cool faster. They give you a nice mechanical advantage versus, you know, some bikes have a 180 and then a 160 in the rear. I mean, they went full size front and rear done right, in my opinion. So I'm just gonna hop on this thing, stow the kickstand. And I think I'm just gonna throttle it up this just to, to test out how powerful it is. Not bad at all, whoa, no pedaling from standstill. We came up this little hill right over here. That's nice, especially for, again, a hub motor. This thing, 65 Newton meters, that's good. That's definitely above average. I'm gonna do a little bit of torque sensing pedal assist and uh, then put the camera on the frame. So the cool thing about torque sensing is that, you know, if I was on a precarious trail here and I'm just pressing gently, See, the bike isn't taking off on me. It's responding based on how hard I'm pedaling as well as the assist level, which happens to be five right now. The other cool thing is that since both brake levers have motor inhibitors, if I get feeling a little bit unstable, I just, I just gently pull those and it cuts power. And then I let go again and I, I have access again. So let's, let's do this one more time. Nice and smooth, and then when I'm ready, 
just takes off. You can really fly on this thing. Uh, so yeah, and also pretty quiet. Glad I got that suspension fork. Um, the other thing I noticed is a little bit of a delay. So the torque sensor starts really quickly, but then it seems like the motor keeps going for almost a second or two after I'm done pedaling. And that's back to those, those brake lever motor inhibitors. I would keep that in mind so you don't get out of control on this bike. Beautiful. We got some nice open trail ahead. Feeling very stable. Again, part of that's because of the wider tires and stuff. The plus size. It's tracking really nicely. Go out here into the grass. Feeling good. Very quiet. I mean, I'm impressed at just how quiet it is. Shifting super fast to 26 kilometers per hour here. Beautiful. Now, one other consideration or trade-off with these torque sensors, like we saw back there on the dropout, is that um, when your chain is bouncing up really hard, I have noticed there are times where it seems to activate the torque sensor, even though I wasn't pedaling very hard. I think it's few and far between, but if you're standing up on this, maybe you're not pedaling, but you're in the highest level of assist and you go off a big bump uh, and that chain pulls enough, you might be able to activate the torque sensor. I haven't really noticed it on my test rides, but it's something I've seen in the past. Beautiful. I mean, there's no way I could do this going that fast if I was sitting down like I am and just pedaling slowly in a high gear. And I am in the highest gear here, so that's the 11 tooth. Again, 38 tooth up front, 11 in the rear. Wow. Gosh, the brakes are quiet. Everything's, everything's working well on this bike. And I think partially because it's being ridden by one of the designers, Jason, and you know, it's all, it's all oiled up correctly. It's perfectly tuned, shifting is smooth. Uh, when you're ordering a bike direct like this, one of the other things you might consider is taking it to a shop, having them kind of tune it up or making sure that you, you get some lubricant or something for the chain and just try to keep things working smoothly. And, and if you start with this going to a shop and maybe making sure your wheels are trued and everything, just doing like a checkup, um, then you're not gonna wear the parts out as quickly either, so. Okay, you guys are mounted to the seat post and we're looking down at that 38 tooth narrow wide steel chain ring and the 11 to 36 tooth cassette in the rear. I'm gonna shift the gears, pedal hard in the highest level of assist. And the idea is that you can listen for motor noise, fender noise if you opt for those. And then, you know, the kickstand you might hear that bouncing around a little bit. Listen for how quickly it starts, but then also how it might continue going after I stop pedaling. That's the delay I was talking about. You can override by pulling the brakes at any time, but that's one of the, the sort of trade-offs with this particular torque sensor versus maybe a multi-sensor. What I'm saying is if you're really going for you know, true mountain biking and you want a bike that's even more agile and responsive, I would go for a mid-drive that has a multi-sensor like the Bosch, Broza, Shimano, Yamaha. There, there are a bunch of great mid-drives, even Bafang, but it's measuring pedal speed, pedal torque, and rear wheel speed, where this is really just primarily torque. And again, the bike is fairly heavy for what amounts to just a hardtail. So here we go. Pretty consistently, there's a noticeable continuation of power beyond when I'm just pedaling. So again, use those brake levers. This time I'm gonna use the throttle.
Beautiful. Yeah, we get up to that 20 mile per hour, 32 kilometer top speed fairly easily. And uh, I think just given the weight and the drag of these tires and everything, this is the kind of bike where pedaling beyond that is gonna be difficult unless you're going down a hill and the tires are fully inflated and it's paved, you know, all of those kinds of things. If, if you're going into wind or even just on a flat surface, you're really gonna to have to work hard to move this bike beyond 20 miles per hour, unless you unlock and kind of do the speed pedal X setup. couple quick tips for you. Uh, since this is a heavier bike, I have taken the battery off when I loaded it onto my car rack. And then the way that I get this up there is I put the bike next to the rack. I lock out the rear brake right hand side and then I pop a wheelie and I set it up there and then I hold the front brake and I kind of gently walk the bike forward and then set the rear wheel up too. So that's that's just some hopefully quick quick help for you. I also wanted to point out that uh, it's really neat that they've they've got this slightly wider hub spacing in the rear, 138 versus 135. It wasn't like something they chose to do explicitly. That's just what Bafang calls for with their motor spec and it allows for that nine speed cassette and everything, but it also gives you a sturdier spoke bracing angle to support these larger, heavier wheels and tires. So same thing up front. This is the XCM32 Boost. So you get boost hub spacing that's 110 millimeters instead of just 100. So again, sturdier spoke bracing angle on both sides and then that through axle w while there really isn't quick release anywhere on this bike um, it's sturdy it's going to give you this stiffness it's going to allow you to at least in my experience line up that disc brake rotor since it is a little bit wider a little bit more precisely uh, it's not going to flex as much when you're doing like a really hard turn it's just a nice upgrade and this is a six millimeter hex wrench right there four millimeter for the seat post collar so awesome uh, I hope this helps. I do my best to answer some questions on the comments, but it, sometimes I just, there's so much going on. We've created a, a forum so you can talk to other people and get direct feedback from people who actually own the bike, not just a reviewer like me who's ha had it for a day or two. Uh, so I hope that helps, electricbikereview.com. I love you guys, I'll be covering more bikes soon. Have fun, ride safe.